So you might say, okay, enough of this nonsense. The problem simply is the rich aren't paying their fair share. That's worth talking about, but you've got to start the conversation with the question, what's fair, right? So here I'll show you some examples. These are, this is data from 2014. This is the latest year that's available. You see the poorest 20% of Americans, that's on the top, uh, top row, their market income, market income means uh, income that they received from participation in the workforce, right? So it's not, it, it is wage income, interest income, that kind of thing. It's not handouts from the government. It's strictly money that they've earned in the marketplace. So the poorest 20% of households in the U.S. earn, on average, some more, some less, but on average they earn $8,000. The next 20% earn 31, the middle 20%, so that's, that's straight up middle income Americans, the average household income there is about 55,000, and it goes up, you see the top 1%, the average household income amongst the top 1% is almost one and a half million dollars. Now, I've shown this to, to many groups of students and ask them, what do you think a fair tax rate is? And when I say tax rate, I mean effective tax rate. Here's what effective tax rate means. After you impose the taxes and the taxpayer goes through all of the business of, you know, hiring accountants and doing write-offs and exemptions and deferrals and all that stuff that you do, do all of that stuff and let the dust settle. When the dust is settled, how much at the end of the day have you paid? That's an effective tax rate. So I ask many students, what do you, if you look at these groups of taxpayers, what would you say is an effect, a fair effective tax rate? You know, the answers I get, of course, varies. If I get a room full of libertarian type students, everybody says zero, right? Yeah. Um, some others, you know, I get more leftist type students who will, who will give me, you know, high, highly progressive numbers. I get more conservative students who give me less, you know, more flat numbers. But the numbers that I tend to get of the progressive variety tend to look like this. Usually, students say something like, the poorest 20% of Americans should only pay 5% of their income. The next 20% should pay 10%, the middle income Americans should pay 15 and then when you get to the top 1%, they should be paying 30%. Now, you can argue whether you personally believe this is fair or not fair, but what I'm showing you is what you know, the, the vast majority of students I've asked have identified as being fair. Now, Keep your eyes on the fair effective tax rate and let me show you what people actually pay. What you notice here is the, the amount of taxes that Americans actually pay, and remember this is not the statutory tax, it's the effective tax after you do all your deductions and exemptions and all that. The tax rates that Americans actually pay are less progressive, excuse me, more progressive than what people consider fair. That is, the top 1% are paying about what people consider to be fair. But as you go down the line, the next 20%, the middle 20%, the poorest 20%, they tend on average to be paying a lower tax rate than what people consider fair. But this isn't the end of the story. There's a thing called negative taxes. And negative taxes are, they're just like taxes, but instead of the government taking money from you, the government hands it to you. Right? This is not a tax rebate, right? A tax rebate means that you accidentally paid too much taxes and the IRS is going to square up with you at the end of the year. That's not what this is. This is the government actually cutting you a check. Income after transfers is, the, is your market income, the amount of money that you earned, you know, doing your job or whatever it is that you do, plus the money that the government gives you free and for nothing. So combine those two things together, you get income after transfers. So transfers are exactly like taxes, except instead of the money going from you to the government, it goes from the government to you. Now, if you include transfers in your calculation of how much taxes people pay, you get a story that looks like this. The poorest 20% of the households earn, on average, about $8,000 a year and they receive from the government $17,000 per year. Right? This is not food stamps, this is not housing allowance, this is a straight up cash, it's a check from the government. They earn 8,000, they receive a check from the government for about 17,000. Middle income Americans, the average household in middle income Americans, uh, in middle income America earns about 55,000 and they actually get back from the government $11,000. So when you account for the amount of money these households pay in taxes, 
and you account for the money they get back in transfers, the amount of the effective tax rate that these households actually pay looks like this. The poorest 20% have a negative 200% tax rate. The next 20% have a negative 35% tax rate. Look at middle income Americans. They've got a negative 7% tax rate. That is, if you look at these numbers, now there are exceptions, remember. These are just on average. But on average, it's only the top 20% who are net payers. And this becomes rather interesting because every time we talk about tax cuts, the, the, the thing you hear back is, well, tax cuts are just tax cuts for the rich. And that's true. It's almost true by definition because according to the, this is the Congressional Budget Office's own numbers, on average, it's only the top 20% who are paying. So if you cut taxes, by definition, you're cutting taxes on the rich. For comparison, those are the, those are the tax rates that people largely claim are, are fair. All right, so my conclusion here is, well, look, the rich are already paying their fair share, largely. And it's actually, if you want to talk about fairness, it's the poor and the middle class who aren't paying their fair share after you consider the transfers they receive back. To that, you might respond, all right, fine. But the fact is, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And maybe because of that, we need to just forget this business about, you know, that the, the poor are getting more money back from the government. That's proper and it's good because the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. Let me show you some data on that. What you're looking at here is U.S. households according to income. This is all adjusted for inflation. So the bars, the vertical bar is not household income. Household income is left to right. So the poor households are on the left, the rich households are on the right. The vertical bar is what percentage of U.S. households fall into that category. So over there on the left, you see households earning under $15,000. And back in 1970, about 15% of U.S. households were in that category. In the middle, that tallest bar, that's households earning 50 to 75,000. In 1970, almost a quarter 25% of U.S. households were earning between 50 and 75,000. Now that's 1970. Remember, these numbers are adjusted for inflation, right? 1970. Now let's go forward a decade. There's 1980. You can see the number of households earning under $15,000 has kind of shrunk a bit. Those middle-income households, 50 to 75,000, they've shrunk a bit as well. We've got a little bit more over on the right, the richer households. That's 1980. Here's 1990. Here's 2000. And here's 2010. Now, as you look at this, look at this pattern. If you look at the poorest households, oh, oh, sorry, 2013, forgot that. Here's the poorest households. Over this period, they've been declining. The number of poor households in the U.S. has been declining. Here's middle-income households. They're largely declining as well. We talk about the middle class disappearing. It is. That's what you see right here. Not only is the middle class disappearing, but the poor are disappearing also. Where have they gone? Largely, they've gone there. Americans adjusted for inflation. Of course, there are exceptions. There are some people who are drastically poorer than they were 10, 20 years ago. But on average, Americans are getting much richer. The poor are, getting, the poor are moving into the middle class. The middle class are moving up into the rich. And largely, this, this thing that you hear about the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer is actually false. Most everybody is getting richer. So here's the bottom line. The rich, if you look at the data, are already paying their fair share. Now, you might argue that 30% maybe isn't enough. Maybe they should pay 50. Okay, that's fine. But what you cannot argue is that they're paying less than other income, other income categories. They're paying by far the most. The poor and the middle class, however, are not. Now, you know, you can argue whether or not uh, the poor and middle class should be taxed more or taxed less, but the fact is, on average, the average poor and middle class household is actually receiving more money from the federal government than they're paying in. They aren't, they aren't taxpayers at all. They're recipients. Third, the poor and the middle class are disappearing. They're joining the rich as time goes by. And then finally, the deficit problem that we end up with here actually isn't a revenue problem at all. It's a spending problem. Over time, the federal government has, been, has, be, has come awash in cash. It's got, per, on a per-person basis, and adjusted for inflation, 3.5 times as much as it did 
in the 1950s. So if we have a, def if we have a deficit problem, it's not caused by revenue, it's caused by the spending. 